In my last video, I showed you how to create image hover effects. So uh, what you have in, by the end of that is that all of the all of the images on your site that you want to do this with, somebody would hover over them and there are these cool little effects depending on what you choose. So here's a rotate, this is a sort of a grown rotate. So it's very fun, it adds a bit of communication and interaction uh, between the website and your user. In this video, we're going to look at creating these similar effects on background image hover effects. So uh, as you can see, as I hover over these background image elements, we have a nice hover effect. Now this is usually something you would find in a premium plugin, usually featuring on something like a post grid and you would, as you hover over the grid item, you would see the background image uh, do something snazzy and make you think, oh, okay, I'm going to add another plugin to my WordPress website. However, this is created only in Elementor Pro. You don't need to use it in an entire grid section. You can use it on individual elements and there are no further plugins for you to use. So there's no coding, no extra plugins and no li real limitations, to be honest, on where you can apply this. I'll show you a few more implementations. We've got that it's a background image because we've got the work department at the bottom here and we've got to play on the color and grow and rotate. It looks really, really striking. And you know, obviously if these were linking somewhere, I could then click on the container. Uh, popping down here, this is actually applied to a loop grid uh, with a, a loop template, or sorry, a post grid with a, yeah, a post loop grid with a, a loop template. So if you've seen my custom post type, videos, you'll know that I'm playing a lot with loop templates and custom post types, really great effects out, out coming out of that. Uh, but these templates also apply to actual loop templates. A uh, little bit of custom code is used there for the name appearing, that's just CSS. Uh, but otherwise, it's just great effect in a loop grid, uh, great result. I'll just show you another implementation, you know, you could show fields of industry, gentle hover effect here, just promotes the interaction and discovery on your site. Okay, so let's actually get into uh, building this out. So if I create a section, nothing snazzy here. I just want to have, I'll have a horizontal, give it a bit of height and uh, bring everything up to the, uh, bring it into the middle. Cool. All right, so we've got ourselves a regular section and what we need to do is create one of these items, one of these elements. So we're going to do that with a container. Now, as is standard with a container, it's stretching across. Actually, I'm gonna bring this to uh, 80% just so that we can see. So it's stretching across the page and we want to limit it. Now, if I gave this a fixed value of say 220, on boxed, it doesn't actually work. So we need to bring that to full width and then give it a pixel value. So um, I'm gonna give this 220, similar to these items up here. And perhaps I'll quickly chuck on a border so that you could see it more easily from where you're sitting. So give it a bit of a snazzy color. There we go. All right, so back to the layout. Uh, we've got ourselves a fixed width on full width and now we need to give it a height. So we want to make a circle, we're gonna go for a square. If I put in an equal um, uh, pixel value, it actually isn't very square. So we need to sort of play with that until it looks correct. So I'm going with that, that looks good to me, yay. Right, so now what we need to do is have a background image. It is actually possible, obviously, with a container to put in a background image. We could just swoop it on in here place someone's face in there, yay, and uh, play with the settings just to make sure it looks as we'd like it to look. And there are even some hover effects, but it doesn't actually work. If we uh, chuck on scrolling effects, and now if we scroll, you can see that there is a cool little uh, scroll effect there, um, but it's not a hover effect. It's not something that promotes interaction. So it's not exactly what we're going for. We do have mouse effects, but again, this is it's not so much of a hover effect, it's a mouse track. So again, that isn't actually what we're looking for. So I'm going to remove that. The other thing I want to do is actually make this a circle and it will help to show you the process a little bit more. So I'm just going to pop along to a style tab on, on the container and turn this into a circle, which again, it helps that we've got this uh, formed as a square. Right, so now what we need to do is actually create a background image without using background image. So I'm gonna whoosh an image into the container 
And the first problem you can see is that it's coming outside of that border radius, isn't it? So I'm just going to um, select a face to put on this. That looks cool. So let's uh, deal with the first problem. We need this to be contained within the actual container. It's not living up to its name. Uh, so we're going to select the container, go to the Layout tab, go to Additional Options, Overflow, and Hidden. And there we go. Right, that's a fantastic start. We've got a nice uh, background-y looking image. I'm just going to increase the border there so that it looks like the others. That looks very nice. Okay. However, is it a background image or just an image in a container currently? Well, uh, yeah, it's an image in a container. If I bring a heading into there, the heading is placed underneath because this is an element in the container. So let's remove that heading for the time being, select the image, and what we want to do is go to Advanced tab and then Position Absolute. Okay, so you'll see there that now it's not really featuring in the layout of the container. We actually saw it shrink a bit there. So we can we can actually correct the size of the container there. We go to 210. Now it looks a bit more circular. At this point, we could place the hover effect on there just so that we can start getting eyes onto that. Uh, so let's go to grow. So sorry, style, uh, hover, style tab, hover tab and then uh, find the hover animation and grow. And that looks pretty cool. If I show you shrink though, we might get the problem in that we're seeing the, the edges of the actual image and we, we don't want that. It, it tells us that it's not a proper full background image. What we need to do is keep the image selected, go along to advanced, and we can actually just pull the margins of the image out until it fills. So if you look at that now, we're not seeing the edge of that image. As it's an absolute image, I can actually just drag it around as well, or you can use these values here. But we can get the look that we want, and that's looking pretty cool, isn't it? So next, let's actually turn it into a background image uh, by putting an element on top. So we're gonna grab a heading and place that in there. L looking at the navigator, we see that the heading is there, um, and it's not going underneath, but we can't see it. So what we need to do is, with the heading selected, pop along to advanced and get the Z index, or if you're American, the Z index. And there we go, we can see the heading now, it's it's on, it's the top layer. So let's change the content of that, and very unimaginatively right now, I'm going to say, call it name. Uh, pop along to the container, and I'll just center these out. Uh, maybe I'll put that at the bottom. And of course, you might want to play with the padding to ensure that nothing is um, in, in a bad place. So that looks good. Selecting the heading, I'll just give it white text at the moment. And fantastic, look at that. We've got a background image hover effect. And of course this can be clickable or the container can be clickable. And if you're having one of the typical issues with um, Elementor in that uh, a link container can actually cause a bit of a problem, uh, then you can, you can add links to elements within it, such as the image or the name. Right, so that's looking cool. Obviously, we want to have consideration for uh, tablet and mobile. Oh, I realize that I am on 80%, so it's being naughty. So that's actually looking okay, and it would have been looking okay. Uh, if I pop along to mobile, we have it looking a bit squiffy. So we want to play with that um, height value probably, uh, increase it like that, or maybe Bring it in here, what should we do? Um, 180, nope, that's clearly not right. So 200, we are getting there. So that would look more correct. And what we can do is obviously duplicate all of these and then we have a section of three. So um, I'll just do that and then you can see all looking great and mobile responsive also. So that looks great on tablet and it looks great on mobile. Uh, very, very funky. Obviously, when you you know click on this uh, with, with the thumb on a mobile, that's when you might see a bit of the effect. We don't have a, a mouse hover effect on mobile. Okay, so that is actually how you create the background image hover effect. You now know how to do this. So just to run through it again, you're going to create a container, give it a, a fixed pixel value, that's the best way to do it, but you don't have to. But if you want to have different elements like this, you might want to 
you know, take a bit more control over the dimensions of the container. And then what we need to do is add an image into it, set its position to absolute, and then play with margins and hides and position in order to make sure that it's covering the entirety of the container. Uh, then what you need to do is uh, make sure that the container has its overflow on additional options set to hidden. And that's going to stop any of the outside edges of the image bleeding out of the container. And that's how we get that sort of uh, enclosed effect. Then of course, you want to add elements to it and make sure that the Z index is higher. So we've got a top layer of any other elements in the container. And that's simply how to do that. Now, don't feel like you're restricted to a square or a circle. You can have all the fun that you would like with these. If we select one of these and go to uh, the border radius, uh, you can have a lot of fun with this. So uh, just play around, make, oh, that was all, that was all connected, wasn't it? So have a bit of fun, get creative and uh, see what you come up with. Okay, so that is how you create background image hover effects, and you can have loads of fun with the presentation of that. It's not restricted to a grid. You can play with the different shapes and come up with something really quite unique. And of course, it's no coding and no extra plugins. Now, as this video has gone on a little bit longer than I wanted it to, I will show you how to create the skewed effect on these divs in another video. I think it uh, deserves a little bit of space on its own. So look out for that video if you're interested in creating this sort of effect here um, where we are able to skew the divs without skewing the content in them which is otherwise the case so thank you for watching the video i hope you enjoyed do like subscribe all the rest of it and if you have any ideas for tutorials or and you know, you'd like to know how to do something do feel free to get in touch and uh, leave a comment uh, requesting that okay cool thanks very much i'll catch you later